Five draws in a row now for Oxford United, but I've got to say that second half whew, was really quite poor. Hello everybody, it's Ian here once again from OUFC Fan View, and it's time to do another review of another Oxford United game. Oxford are at home again, this time to Derby County. So two sides promoted to the championship this season and both sides matching each other stride for stride so far in the early knockings of the championship season. Last time we met Derby inflicted that really crushing defeat on us at the back end of 2023. Oxford being 2-0 up Derby roared back to get a 3-2 win. But things are different now, right? We're a new Oxford United now. Those sort of things can't possibly happen. And at Fortress Kassam, we never, ever lose. Well, we haven't done so far this season. And after this one, we still haven't. But it's another draw for Oxford United. It's five draws in a row. And we saw a pretty decent first half and a pretty poor second half. So in the end, you probably just have to take your lumps once again. It finished. Oxford United won. Derby County won. So Oxford fans, Derby fans, let me know your thoughts on this one down in the comments below. But we'll go over the game like I usually do. We'll do the team news. I'll give my review talking about the key points in the match. And then I'll give my final thoughts for both sides at the end of the video. You can jump to any point of the video if you like. You just have to use the timestamps that are down in the description below or on the video itself. But if you do, the very least you can do is hit like on this video because that helps me out a heck of a lot. And if you do like the content, including my silly predictions video where I always stupidly predict Oxford to win, then please hit subscribe. Let's have a look at this Oxford United team news. And I thought there would be changes for this game, but Des Buckingham has only made one from that side that got that draw against West Brom. And it is the one I wanted to be fair because it's Saturday's hero, Dane Scarlett, who replaces Mark Harris up front. It's his first league start for the Yellows. But apart from that, it is how you were. You've got Malcolm Abue and you've got Louis Sibley, ex-Derby players, and they'll be hoping they can come on off the bench to hurt their old club. Let's move on to Derby County. Paul warned Rams were level and are still level on points with United going into this one. They had just secured their first away point against Millwall at the weekend, but Paul Warren has made four changes to that side. Some of it forced by injury. Kane, Kane Wilson, Ben Osborne, Nathaniel Mendes-Lang and Callum Elder come into the 11. Mendes-Lang skippers the side and along with Yerry Yates and Corey Blackett-Taylor, it does look quite a formidable forward line for Derby County, but it's set pieces which are the massive weapon for this Derby side. And ex-Oxford's Curtis Nelson will be looking for his third goal of the season to hurt the U's. Let's move on to this game. And it was a good start from Oxford United in this game. It was an early shot from Sariki Dembele, which went miles over the bar. But it was a sign of Oxford's attacking intent. Other than a couple of slack passes at the back, Oxford did look pretty good in the opening knockings of this one. Goodrum and Dembele looking lively. And on 12 minutes... Oxford took the lead. It was a fine team move and Oxford kept possession for a while, passing it from left to right, most of the forwards players being involved. But it was when Dembele fed El Mazzuni on the overlap is where Oxford got in. His low cross into the box was definitely tucked away by Dane Scarlett. Two in two for start Scarlett and scoring on his first start, proving that Buckingham made the right call. It was a perfect start for Scarlett and for Oxford. Derby nearly did hit back straight away and on 14 minutes uh, Oxford failed to clear a cross and Mendes Lang was able to bring it down. He drifted inside. He sold Kieran Brown up the river with his dummy and then took a shot which was well hit and Elliot Moore did fantastically well to get across and block the shot. Wilson picked up the rebound of that and he kind of ghosted between two Oxford players. His angle was narrow but he did get his shot away and Cumming was able to turn it behind. Entered into a little Little passage of play where it did get a little bit scrappy but Oxford were kind of inviting Derby pressure really they kept giving the ball away in their own half trying to be a bit too intricate and it was risk reward because you sense they were just kind of one man one man away or one pass away from getting beyond this Derby County midfield but they just kept giving the ball away and letting the Rams get up ahead of steam and unlike other championship sides we've seen where they've been guilty of overplaying you saw none of that from Derby every time they had a chance to get the the ball in the box 
particularly from wide areas, they were taking it. Blackett Taylor was looking their most dangerous player and he got played in behind Peter Chioso on 32 minutes. He played it back to Osborne, but he was on the stretch and his effort was quite tame and went wide. But that did sort of spur United into life because a minute later, it was Oxford's turn. Tyler Goodrum got beyond Elder and he drove to the edge of the area. It was a delightful shot come cross which just evaded Dane Scarlett and just evaded the far post. Not too many more chances before the half-time whistle came. There was an effort from Blackett Taylor, which was hit straight at coming through a load of bodies, but luckily it was straight at the Oxford keeper. And then Tyler Goodrum had another chance at goal. Oxford dispossessed Osborne in a dangerous area, and Goodrum was quite far out, but we've seen Goodrum score from this sort of range, but this time he dragged it narrowly wide. So we went into half-time 1-0 to Oxford United. There's been some good and some bad from both sides in this half. Both sides have had chances and both sides have had spells where they were in control but there's been a lot of wayward and sloppy passing to go along with the good stuff. Oxford have been at their best when they've been able to get their wide players into the game. Dembele and Goodrum have looked lively and Derby's best spark has been Corey Blackett-Taylor. He's been involved with a real battle with Peter Kioso and uh, it looked like he was getting the better of PK uh, at the start of the half, but towards the end of the half, you did see Kyoso start to sort of turn that around. But it was a good battle between the two of them. But it's a, it's quite a tight game. I would say Oxford have been the better side in the first half. But it is only that very neat Dane Scarlet finish that separates the two sides. Can Oxford build on it? Join me for the second half. And the short answer is no, they can't build on it. But we'll get into hows and the whys. But the start with Oxford had to make a half-time change. And it was Owen Dale who came on for Sariki Dembele. Oxford not choosing to bring on a Bue. They went with Dale. I think that might be because Dembele took a knock. Hopefully it's not too bad. But you saw a vastly different Derby side in this second half. And they roared their way back into this game. They started on 50 minutes with Blackett Taylor once again causing United problems. Oxford giving the ball away and he was able to fly down the wing. He got to the byline, he pulled it back. But it was Hootmine who got there and his effort, he should have done better with his effort really. He went for a side-footed, cushioned finish and it was quite easy for Oxford to block it behind for a corner. But it didn't take much longer for Derby to get back into this game. And on 55 minutes, Derby were level. It was a delightful finish from their skipper, Mendes Lang. But from an Oxford point of view, this was awfully sloppy. It's Will Vaux again, folks, I'm afraid, who couldn't deal with a bouncing ball. Middle of the pitch, just kind of outside of the penalty area. He's not really under any pressure. And he just plays a horror show of a ball back, which puts... Kieran Brown and Ben Nelson into so much trouble. Brown's header is easily picked off by Yates, who pushes it across to Mendes Lang, who's in space, and he makes a fine finish. He drills it low into the bottom corner, and Derby are all square. But everything was so much better from Derby in this second half. First and foremost, they looked fitter and stronger than Oxford United. But the And the pace and their movement was so much sharper. And just the general intensity of their play was really forcing United back. Oxford needed to make changes. And on the hour, Mark Des Buckingham did. He replaced Will Scarlett with Mark Harris. And just a few minutes later, we saw McEachran and Louis Sibley come on for El Mazzuni and Will Volx. But not too many chances in this second half, really, despite Derby being on top. But it was one on 69 minutes where it came from another Oxford United mistake, a real mistake from nothing as well. Ben Nelson, who I thought had a good game, but he did make a couple of poor passes in either half. A terrible ball to Kieran Brown. It was easy for Jackson to intercept him. He got to the edge of the box, played a low ball across to Mendes Lang, who he is thinking, I've got a great chance to tuck this one away. We're all thinking he's going to tuck it away. But out of nowhere, Peter Chioso comes in with a superb sliding block and Oxford and Nelson get away with it. And Derby did look the more likely side for the majority of the half, but in the final 10 minutes, 
minutes, finally, Oxford did have a decent spell and put Derby under a little bit of pressure, but they really had no shots on goal, apart from Louis Sibley, who got a decent effort away on the edge of the box. It was awkward for Zesterman, but he did well enough to clear the danger. The crowd were really roaring Oxford on, but Oxford really had nothing more in the tank. They just weren't very sharp in the second half. And in the end, probably quite happy to come away with a point. So a good half from either side and a point gained for both sides, really. Both sides will probably think they could have won the game because Oxford had chances in the first half, Derby in the second. But there you go. What well, It is what it is. We move on to the final thoughts. And let's start with the opposition in Derby County. And I kind of got what I expected from Derby today. The only thing I'm quite glad we didn't get was the barrage of set pieces that we seemed to face the last time you, we guys played you at the Kazam. But we didn't really get that today. But we did get what I kind of thought from Derby. Strong and solid at the back. Not the most amazing football inside. Not a great side at passing it out through the thirds. But effective enough. And got some good forward players like uh, Blackett Taylor, like Mendes Lang. Didn't see a lot from Yates today that can really make the difference. But uh, what must be impressive for you, Derby fans, is the way you came back into this game after the first half. Because the first half you were... Very disjointed, very poor. There was a lot of quite wild passes in possession, really. It, it really, like, some of the, the passing was really bad. And you did see that a little bit in the second half as well. But you, you definitely saw a much higher level. Players um, winning a lot more second balls, getting beyond the Oxford midfield, breaking the lines. And you just generally pushed Oxford back for the majority of that second half. And you'll definitely be thinking you should have won the game. You're probably... Look at Oxford, and you'll probably say you're the we're the poorest side you've played. I would imagine. I'd be interested to know your thoughts on that, um, because in that second half, I thought we were really, really ropey. So credit to you guys for that. But you just couldn't uh, couldn't beat us. Um, so that's a good thing from my point of view. And uh, I just wonder about your centre forward situation. Um, is Yates Yates was is okay, but is he the man that's going to score you the goals? Um, to make you have a successful season. And is a successful season for you guys just staying up or do you have higher aspirations from that? Have you got any players off the bench or injured that can make the difference up there? And um, But other than that, I I feel like it is a little just... It, it is substance over style with Paul Warren, which is kind of what you get where Derby are a pretty tough side to play against and very good at home and starting to pick up points away now so yeah i mean i i think you should be encouraged with the start you've made and uh we'll we'll meet you back at the pro I keep saying i keep saying the baseball ground as a joke pride park later on in the season let me know your thoughts down below and good luck until we meet you again and that brings me on to Oxford United. And yeah, we saw the tale of two halves, but not really in a good way. I was always leaves a lasting bad taste in the mouth when you do have that bad second half. The first half does get quite easily forgotten. But it is important to remember that there were good periods in that first half. And I generally thought the, the forward players did a good job in that first half. I thought Dembele and Goodrum looked very lively. They still have an over tendency to cut in rather than go down the line, which makes Oxford very narrow, which is very frustrating. But I, I thought that El Mazzuni was particularly good in the first half. A Rodriguez, I, I thought did okay at times I thought there was one instance at the end of the first half where he really should have done better with a shot but um I necessarily think he might be the next one that just needs to have a little bit of a break out of the side we'll see how much changes get made but the second half was really poor and really sloppy and that goal we gave away was almost unforgivably bad and it started with Elliot Moore really Elliot Moore, Will Vaux is obviously going to be the one who most people are going to point the finger at, and rightly so. But Elliot Moore just hitting a blind ball um, out wide into the middle, just almost not helping Oxford United out much more then. I don't know why you just can't bang that down the line or even bang it into the stands and just try to deal with the throw in from there. But you play these players do that, don't they? They play those blind balls into blind areas. 
and you just end up seem to putting yourself under tr into pressure. But Vault made a bad mistake, and it looked all very untidy, and it, we got quite rightly got punished by Derby on that occasion. And it just makes me wonder, are we getting away with it a little bit? We keep talking about you get punished at this level, but are we getting punished? I felt we kind of got away with it in the last three games, really. Um, although in this one, we, we did have a good first half and we were poor in the second. And it is, is, is there a problem just with the general fitness? Is it the intensity of the championship that's catching up with the players and we're still not kind of used to it yet? Are we just not going to be able to play three games in a week? Should Buckingham have made more changes? Um, you saw that Paul Warren made four. Should Buckingham have made more than the one? Obviously, the one was good. And Dane Scarlett scored a goal, looked lively, looked sharp. There's some good hold up play. A couple of times he's not quite got the um, willingness to chase lost causes that Mark Harris has, which might upset some people. But you can't really argue with the results so far. He got he got really one chance in the game and he tucked it away. Um, hopefully Dembele is not out injured for too long, because other than that, we really do, do seem to struggle for lack of pace on the wings, especially if you're not going to give Malcolm Abue a go. Um, we are really kind of struggling for... Um, sort of pace in those wide areas which makes me worry wonder what we're doing with Tyler Goodrum because the end of, you've had three two, two games in a row now where Tyler Goodrum's ended up playing in three positions he's played left wing right wing and he's ended up playing in the number 10 role should we not be looking to have him in the number 10 then if you're doing that you clearly think he's one of your best players so should we not have one of our best players in his best position which I still think is that 10 roll. I don't know why we were so weak in the second half. That was really just frustrating me. You saw so many times players had a chance to get on the ball and they just did silly basic errors like holding onto the ball and then falling over looking for a foul and it wasn't given or over hitting a pass or playing a sloppy pass or just giving easy possession back to Derby time and time again and it's a it was a real frustrating after a second half really because you felt that was a game although Derby would feel the same you felt that was a game that we we should have been eyeing up to win but it is five draws in a row uh, we move on to 14 points which again isn't to be sniffed at we are still doing pretty well for this early stage of the season and again i guess you just can't be too picky with picking up points and you, and you have no divine right in this league to dominate and play well over anyone and you just have to accept that the opposition are going to have periods where they're in control but we were really largely unable to wrestle that control back from Derby which was a little bit disappointing tonight and I thought would have liked to have seen us a bit more on the front foot especially in the second half and I guess that's where you do miss those players like your Cameron Brannigans uh, maybe your Edwards and um, and maybe the experience of Matt Phillips might have really helped out in those situations and it does lead me on to thinking what sort of team do we play for Sunderland now because I kind of feel that Des Buckingham by not making those changes he's kind of put the eggs all the eggs in the basket really of trying to get the win here and almost treating Sunderland like a bit of a free hit so it the fact that we haven't got the win does that mean that we're not really going to make too many more changes for the Sunderland game? I don't really see what changes can be made other than Louis Sibley coming in. You could start Dale. It just looks like he's never going to give Abue a start. I think he should start um, sorry, Scarlett again. Do you play McEachran instead of Volks? I feel that's going to be a tough game for McEachran to come in, but maybe that is what we need to do. Let me know down below. Little bit disappointed in this one today, and I'm sure you will be too. Leave your comments. You can't just all put it at the fault of Will Vaux. He made a mistake. It happened. But it'd be nice if he did cut those mistakes out. I'm not going to lie there. But um, we'll move on to Sunderland. That's going to be a tricky game. Leave your comments. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the support and the predictions videos as well. I'm very happy with how they're turning out. And, um, yeah, if you can just either share these videos out or post them on social media or whatever that would help me out a lot too because i don't seem to be getting a lot of the traction on these review videos but thank you very much i'll be back very soon and hey it's another game unbeaten at fortress kasam